Hello, I'm Dr. Allen, and this is the anatomy lab. The upper limb is attached to the trunk by the pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle consists of the clavicle and the scapula. The clavicle is a bony strut that joins the scapula at the acromioclavicular joint and the axial skeleton at the sternum to form the sternoclavicular joint. The sternoclavicular joint is the only bony attachment of the upper limb with the axial skeleton. The scapula is a large, flat, triangular bone that is suspended on the posterior wall of the rib cage by its muscular attachments. It is characterized by several markings and processes. The spine of the scapula is a prominent ridge that arches forward to end anteriorly as the acromion. The acromion is a prominent process that articulates with the clavicle at the acromioclavicular joint. The coracoid process is located just inferior to the distal end of the clavicle, and it is the site of the muscular origin of the short process of the biceps brachii. Positioned between the coracoid process and the acromion is the glenoid cavity, or fossa. The, this is the depression where the head of the humerus articulates with the scapula, and the joint is known as the glenohumeral joint. The humerus is the long bone of the arm. It has a rounded head and two distal protuberances, the medial and lateral epicondyles. At the elbow joint, both the lateral bone of the forearm, the radius, and the medial bone of the forearm, the ulna, articulate with the humerus and with each other. In a posterior view of the elbow joint, we can see that the proximal end of the ulna is much larger than that of the radius. This process is known as the olecranon. At the wrist joint, the distal ends of the radius and the ulna also articulate with each other, and this allows the radius to move medial to the ulna during pronation. The wrist joint is formed by the articulations of the distal ends of the radius and the ulna with the carpal bones. The wrist joint allows flexion, extension, as well as adduction and abduction. The bones of the hand consist of the metacarpals that end at the knuckles and the bones of the fingers are the phalanges. The lower limb is attached to the axial skeleton at the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle consists of three separate bones. The ilium, most superior, anterior and inferior is the pubic bone, and posterior and inferior is the ischium. In this posterior view of the pelvis, we can identify the three pelvic bones or hip bones again. The ilium, the ischium located posterior and inferior, and the pubis, located inferior and anterior. These bones can be more clearly identified in this specimen here, where again we see the ilium, anterior and inferior, we have the pubic bone, and then posterior and inferior, we have the ischium. The ilium is most superior and is characterized by its large iliac crest that forms the superior margin of the pelvis. The ilium articulates with the axial skeleton at the sacroiliac joint. It's an ovular joint between the sacrum and the wings of the ilium. In a posterior lateral view of the ilium, we can see the greater and lesser sciatic notches. The sciatic nerve passes through the greater sciatic notch to reach the thigh and leg. In this view of the pelvis, we can see the organization of the pubic bone. The pubic bone is located anterior and inferior to the ilium. 
the pubic bone has a superior ramus that fuses with the ilium and the ischium, and an inferior ramus that fuses inferiorly with the ischium. The pubic symphysis is a fibrocartilaginous joint that joins the pubic bone on one side with the pubic bone on the other side. In this lateral view of the pelvis, we can look at the organization of the ischium. The ischium is located inferior and posterior to the ilium and has a superior ramus that fuses with the ilium and pubic bone and an anterior ramus that fuses with the pubic bone. This opening here is referred to as the obturator foramen and it is mainly closed in the living state. The fossa seen here is referred to as the acetabulum. It is the site where the head of the femur articulates with the pelvic bone. The hip joint is a typical ball and socket joint where the head of the femur articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvic bones. This joint is considerably more stable than that of the shoulder joint, especially since the lower limbs have to support the weight of the body. The thigh bone or femur is the largest bone in the body. It is characterized by having the rounded head which articulates with the pelvic bone and the acetabulum, the neck region which joins the head to the shaft of the femur, the greater and lesser trochanters of the femur, the shaft of the femur expands distally to form the medial and lateral condyles of the femur. At the distal end of the femur, we find the knee joint. The knee joint is often referred to as a table joint, where the medial and lateral condyles of the femur rest on top of the medial and lateral condyles of the tibia. The small bone located anterior, anterior to the knee, knee joint is referred to as the patella. In the leg, we find two long bones. The most anterior and medial is referred to as the tibia and the lateral and smaller is referred to as the fibula. The tibia has an expanded region proximally which, is, which are called the medial and lateral condyles which of course articulate with the femur. At the distal end of the tibia we find an expanded region medially which is referred to as the medial malleolus of the ankle. It articulates with the talus bones of the ankle. The fibula has an expanded region at its proximal end called the head of the fibula. It articulates with the tibia. The head of the fibula has no articulation with the femur at the knee joint. The distal end of the fibula has an expanded region which is referred to as the lateral malleolus of the ankle. It articulates with the talus bones of the ankle and in addition articulates with the distal end of the tibia. The bones of the foot include the tarsal bones, which form the ankle joint, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. The most important of the tarsal bones are the talus bone, which forms a joint with the tibia and fibula, and the calcaneus, which forms an attachment to the muscles of the calf via the calcaneal tendon or the Achilles tendon. This concludes our study of the appendicular skeleton.